Hello there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rahul and today I'm going to be showing you a few changes that I made to my first PC build, a video of which you can actually find here. And I also want to discuss a few other things. I've got the script right here and let's get right into it. As you can see, uh, I've got the CPU cooler and the additional fans installed. The PC does look a little more interesting now. I did record the CPU fixing procedure and I'll roll that video in just a bit and then speak about the other things I wanted to address. So the CPU cooler I chose for my build is Deepcool Gamax 400 V2. This is a 120mm air cooler that comes with a blue LED light. There's also a red version available but it's not as common as the blue one. I got this for about 1600 Indian rupees. And the reasons I chose this one over something like a Cooler Master Hyper 212 series ones, which are actually more popular than this one in the budget segment. Uh, but the reasons are basically, uh, first off, it's the price to performance ratio. As per tests conducted by other YouTubers, this one surely performs as good as a Hyper 212 fan, if not better. If I had a Ryzen 3500, anything above this would probably be an overkill. You honestly don't need a better one even if you're planning to slightly overclock your CPU. Uh, I tried overclocking my CPU till 4.4 GHz and everything including temperatures was under control. The airflow is actually really good in the case that I'm using thanks to the front mesh opening and adequate number of fans in the case. This makes sure that the CPU cooler is getting enough air to blow onto the metal plates in the heatsink, so thereby keeping the temperatures in check at all times. So if you're planning to get a budget cooler, I would 100% recommend this one unless you are planning to get a different processor that runs a little hotter, uh, something more towards the high end. Or if you're planning to overclock your CPU, again, a different one, not Ryzen 3500, probably something like a Ryzen 3600. Uh, or if the climate in the area you live is usually hot, relatively, just to give you a quick idea of the temperatures that I was getting while using the cooler. Before using the cooler, my CPU would idle at about 47 to 48 degrees centigrade and under maximum stress, it would go till 85 to 88. And once I started using the cooler, uh, the temperature would idle at about 36 to 38 degrees centigrade. So there was a drop of about 10 degrees there and under maximum stress it wouldn't cross 75 so i think there's a decrease of about 10 to 15 degrees there so i am actually really happy with the cooler and the way it's performing uh it actually goes really well with the processor as well uh, also just make sure that you use a good quality thermal paste and also not to use excessive strength while fixing the cpu cooler into your motherboard because it might damage the processor And now to the case fans. The case did come with the front bottom intake and the rear exhaust fans pre-installed but I decided to get a couple of additional fans to have a great airflow in the case and also to make sure I'll never have to worry about the airflow ever again. To explain why I fixed the fans the way I did, I'll have to explain three things. Positive air pressure, negative air pressure and neutral air pressure. So what are these? Uh, Positive air pressure simply means that more air is being taken into the case than the amount that's being pushed out. Neutral is when equal amount of air is being taken in and sent out. Negative is when more air is being sent out than the amount that's being taken in. So you might be thinking, which one would be suitable for me and how would I know? So before I actually give my opinion on it, just keep in mind that this is something that's debated a lot upon on the internet and there's no one for all way to do it. So ultimately, if you feel like you could achieve better results, you'll have to try out different setups and see for yourselves. Before we get into the pressures, there's one thing I wanted to mention, that's dust filters. Always make sure that your intake fans have dust filters on them uh, so that your PC doesn't take in a lot of dust along with the air that it takes in. I'm gonna mention this in a second again. So now let's discuss the pressures. So positive pressures. The most obvious thing is that more the air that's being taken in, more will be the dust that comes with it. So make sure that you have dust filters as I mentioned earlier on your intake fans. Uh, if you have that checked, then you could possibly try positive pressure. Also, positive pressure may not be really suitable for your PC, especially if you're living in a relatively hotter climate. 
because ultimately what you're doing is you're taking in a lot of hot air and it's not going to help with cooling down the components in the PC. There's definitely an upside to having positive pressure in your PC, but before I get into that, here's some simple physics. Air always flows from a high pressure region to a low pressure region. So if you're maintaining a positive pressure, the pressure inside the case will always be higher than the pressure that's outside the case. So the air that's being taken in will constantly try to escape through all the gaps and holes in the case. And trust me, every case has a lot of gaps and holes. So what this will do, the escaping air kind of pushes away all the dust that's trying to enter the case through those gaps. So you can consider this as an absolute upside, especially if it's quite dusty where you live. And that's pretty much it about positive pressure. Now, negative pressure. It's basically the exact opposite of positive pressure. What you're doing here is you're maintaining a lower pressure in your case uh, than what's outside. So this also means that the dust that's outside is, will constantly keep going into your case through all the gaps in the case. So this will be more suitable for your PC to push out all the hot air that's being generated inside only if you can make sure that you can keep your PC environment as dust free as possible. Now, neutral pressure. This is probably something that suits most of the builds, but just keep in mind that ideal neutral pressure is always difficult to achieve, mainly because there are a lot of things to monitor, like the speed of the fan and the amount of air each fan is pulling in or pushing out, etc. I've personally decided to go with neutral pressure for my case. I have two intake fans and two exhaust, but ultimately it's still a little tilted towards the positive side. You can always check this by using an incense stick or something that can produce heatless smoke by placing it near the gaps or holes in your case. If the smoke is being pushed away, then that obviously means it's positive air pressure inside the case. If it's being sucked in, then that means it's negative pressure. Now about the fans. Leaving the RGB aside, we generally have two types of fans. One is 3-pin and one is 4-pin. Four 4-pin four fans come with PWM, which is pulse width modulation which without getting into technical terms means that it allows better speed control. So the speed kind of increases uh, when the temperature inside the case or from the motherboard sensors is high and it reduces when the temperature is normal or low. So as I mentioned earlier, there were two fans that came with my case pre-installed. One is the RGB one that's in the front, which acts as an intake. And the other one is in the rear, which acts as an exhaust. That's a non-RGB one. So both these fans are three pin ones and I decided to go with four pin fans for the extra ones that I was gonna buy. And Antex Park caught my attention because of the price. Uh, they, they come at about 660 rupees each, which is a great price. And they also come with RGB links if you're into that kind of stuff. And they definitely do add good looks to the case, which otherwise is not so RGB focused. And about the LED, if your motherboard doesn't have more than one RGB header, what you can do is you can connect the RGB headers from both of these fans in series connection and just connect one final pin to the motherboard to keep them in sync. And now to free airflow and cable management. I'm personally quite satisfied with the way I've managed the cables in this PC, especially compared to how they initially were in the first PC build video. Uh, and just make sure that you manage the cables in your PC in such a way that it doesn't restrict the airflow or affect it in any other way. It becomes quite important when especially you're using high-end processors or GPUs uh, which tend to generate more heat than the budget ones. So just keep that in mind. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. Do let me know if you have any questions or opinions in the comments below. Drop a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.